Hey everybody, it's Paul from Alexander, Knife Sharp and Laser Engraving. So I want to talk digital microscopes again. And the reason for this is because the other week I mentioned one of my really good ones actually finally broke after, oh, probably over five years of use. And I don't fault that microscope or anything or either that model or that maker. Uh, it, this is a rough environment here. I'm grinding, there's dust, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Things get knocked over. It, it, which has happened to that thing many times. It really served me well for the five years that, it, that I had it. And I just want to say that, you know, these come in all ranges and all different types of abilities. And I actually like in my particular shop having multiple options. And not long ago, we had a really nice deal for a very a mid-level microscope from Gokafix that is great. It's an all-around very good microscope. And then I also had a one that I would say was even more high-end than that, and I had several that are not quite as high-end as the middle-range Gokafix, you know, little handheld digital magnifiers like this one, which I love. Sometimes I just need to quickly look at something, but other times I really want to examine stuff. The guys over at Gokafix recently offered me their top end microscope and it was kind of perfect timing because my other one just broke. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'd love to review it. I'd like to have another, what I consider high end, really great microscope. It just arrived. I'm gonna unpack it because I have a couple Miyabis here that I'm working on. Really need a, a good bit of work. And I just wanted to, you know, check out this new microscope. Well, first thing I was floored when I opened it because it, it has a 10 inch screen. Look at this. This thing is beautiful. Now we are talking serious, serious digital microscope here. The microscopes are all very, very similar in the design, even the stands and everything else. What's really different is its ability to run and how well the picture is and how well everything you can see it and the LEDs and is everything working well. So I'm gonna get this set up, get to using it so I can share that with you. The other thing that's really great about this is they have offered again, I don't know if you remember, but they gave us an oh, incredible discount on the other microscope that they had and that thing has been sold out for quite some time. They're still doing really great with that one. And every time they get it in, it sells out. But they thought, you know what? Let's send Paul the high-end one and see if he'd review it. And it just happened to be perfect timing that my other high-end digital microscope had broken. And let's take a look and see what this can do. So I'll get it set up and we'll go from there. All right, so let's get started taking a look at this new microscope. The first thing I wanted to point out to you is the screen difference in size. And it's a, it's a pretty big difference. So here's the original uh, Gokafix. It had a seven inch screen. When you, write, when you see screen measurements, they're always done on a diagonal from corner to corner. So you can see here that measures right there at seven inches like it should. This one should be 10 inches and yes, 10 inches. And you just wanted to put those side by side so you could see the difference. That 10 inches is a really nice field of view. It gives you a really beautiful picture. We'll move this out of here for now. I just wanted to give you an idea how much bigger that 10 inch screen is compared to the seven inch screen. Another nice upgrade to this new unit is that we now have a wireless remote as opposed to the other one that you saw was plugged into the side of the unit. We now have a fully wireless remote, which is really nice if you want to take pictures or video of things, having the ability to not be bumping and moving stuff, especially with photographing things under high magnification, it's really useful to have a wireless remote. Then you're not blurring your picture or anything from movement even with you know with a little cable could possibly do that just a nice feature that i was really happy to see that it had the wireless remote the other thing that i didn't understand clearly when i looked at the advertisements and 
the photographs of this, I thought this was going to be coming with three separate lenses that I was going to have to put on and take off. At first, that was kind of a turnoff to me. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't want to be swapping lenses on a digital microscope. But I was really surprised and happy to see when it got here. It's not three lenses. All three of the available powers of lens options on this microscope are built in to this one lens. So right now, I'm on a thousand times power, but I can move this and click, and now I'm at 1500 power, and I can go all the way up to super incredible magnification of 2500 times power. Now let's first go back to the 1000 times and talk about a couple other things that I thought was really cool. Besides having the actual lenses that increase in power, which is always nice, this microscope also has some digital zoom capabilities that you can control right from the remote. I'm here, I'm focused in on at a thousand, but I can actually click this and you'll see we're now getting digital zoom and it, it looks quite good. Like we're up to 1.8 1. 1. there, 1.9, 2.0. We're starting to get a little bit of pixelization here. Let's see if I can refocus that at all. Yeah, a little noise, little pixelation coming in there, but still not bad. I mean, considering that that's digital zoom right there. 2.1, 2.2, we're still going. Let's see how high this digital zoom goes. All the way up to 2.9. So that's a, that's a nice option too to have there that you don't necessarily have to change and go to the higher power lens. And typically with things like this, as you go up in your higher powers, it's gonna require more light because basically your higher power lenses also have smaller apertures. For those of you that don't know a ton about photography, as that aperture gets smaller, things become sharper, but they also re require a lot more light. So you will see a difference in brightness levels when you're going up in your zoom power. So just know that as well. You do have to refocus if you change the power. It's just the nature of how this is. But I love having the options of having the three powers built right into one lens. And I can just make a click, make some adjustments, and then take a look at everything. With knife sharpening, it's always important to have very good control over your lighting because we don't require a whole lot of light often because of the mirrored effect of looking at st stainless steel. The more polished something is, the brighter it reflects back into the camera and sometimes it can be really hard to see. Another thing that I love here is we do have a slide control for the brightness. This is the lens and you can see that's kind of blown out so we don't really need all that light. I can bring it down some, even turn it off and you can see we're still seeing really good picture there. The other thing is I have these nice fill lights on the side, which I can control on the back here with a little dial. And I can use these also sometimes to help add a little bit of light onto my subject. And you can see I can move these around and being able to ha you know, hit from different angles or bounce light off of a certain area can also be helpful when you're trying to look at certain things under magnification. So I was very happy to see that as well. Let's go to the next higher magnification level and see how that looks. And I think the next higher level is probably where most of you will be using the most. This 1500 is a very nice magnification level to work at and be able to examine on a knife's bevel and start seeing some apex and what's going on with a knife. So I'm just gonna give this one click and now we are at 1500 and I'm gonna start adjusting. Now you can adjust your focus uh, two ways here. So you can go up and down with your, with your stand. 
So that's one way to do it. And you can see we're way up there now. So we have a lot more distance there. Let's come down to our edge. There we go. And then we have our fine focus right here that's right on the lens, which is really nice. And it's very smooth and easy to turn. So there's a little wheel here, a little dial that I can move. So I don't have to turn that whole lens anymore. I just have a little wheel dial right here on the right hand side that I can do. And then again, like I said, we also still have that ability to zoom in digitally and take a look. Now the very best option is always to use your, your optics as your magnification. The little bit of digital I've always found doesn't hurt to take you know a, a quick peek at something. It will give you good information there as well. But you can see the other thing with digital microscopes is depending on the focus and how much focus you have, you're also gonna get a bigger view the closer you get to your subject. So I'm gonna show you this real quick. Keep in mind, you can always move down. There's gonna be a point where it's gonna be unable to focus past a certain point, but we can keep moving down here and we'll keep just focusing, making our adjustments. But you'll see we're gonna get a bigger picture as we get closer and closer to our apex and our bevel. And we're gonna need some more light too as we get in there. So I'm gonna do a little bit of adjustment on the light. And as we keep moving down, we might need to adjust that more and more. And you'll probably find a sweet spot that you really like, and then you know, you'll know you kind of get it set and that'll be it. So I'm at the max uh, point on that focus there. So this is the closest I can come down at 1500 and again I don't need that much light I'm going to turn that off and I could even adjust with my side lights here and there we have a really nice picture the next one is 2500 this will be really neat now this was freshly sharpened I just did this knife you can see it's got a beautiful perfect apex we're not seeing anything, but as knives get used, become dull, and then we have to clean them up, and then we hone them a bit and everything. Under extreme magnification, keep in mind, the apex is really more of a mountain range. It's not this perfect straight line. Under extreme magnification, it is a jagged thing that kind of looks like a mountain range. We're going to go all the way up now to 2,500. I want to show you what that looks like. You have to get even closer with the uh, 2500 zoom level. We're probably going to need, like I said before, a, a, a good bit more light. As you increase that magnification, as I said before, you also have to increase your light. Okay, and we're starting to see things come into focus here. But I'm going to bring up my light here. And I'm going to work on my focus here. Now I'm backing my focus out a bit so I can maybe raise up a little bit higher. So there we are actually starting to see that apex. And since this was freshly sharpened, this was, you know, just done, just honed, you're, you're not seeing quite the mountain peak that you start to see of what happens with an apex over time but I'm gonna show you on another knife, all right? So I'm gonna switch these knives out. A Miyabi Black, uh, my same chef, this is Chef Taylor. He's, I've mentioned Chef Taylor before. He's my TV chef. He's been on uh, Beat Bobby Flay. He's been on uh, Chopped. He's got a really cool job. He works for a tech billionaire and he is a private chef. Very, very cool job. You know, I'm always telling people how the burr of a knife is like a mountain range and you can literally see it here. Like, look at the, we are looking at that little mountain range and then you can see the former grind down here of this Miyabi. So there we are starting to look right at the apex of a used knife. And we even got 
good color. We can really see an amazing shot at 2,500. Now, I have never had a digital microscope that could go that close to where it's literally truly seeing that apex. Now, the hardest thing, like I said, is you can see how every little bit of movement here affects that. Look at that. Look at that little piece hanging off of there that you couldn't even see under normal, even, even like regular normal magnification, but look at that. And this is that mountain range that I've talked about many times, how a, the apex of your knife is not straight under extreme magnification. Look there, there's another piece. Look at that little curly cue hanging off of there. That is just, that's amazing. Look, there's pieces the whole length. Is that not, that's, that's just super impressive. So I wanted to show you a few stills and some video. So here is the same Miyabi black before sharpening. You can see the jaggedy edge on that apex there. Not real clean looking. And then what we're going to come up to here is here's a little video I took after I sharpened it. See how much straighter the apex is up top? And those little white dots are actually from my paper cut test. That is little tiny shards of paper that are microscopically stuck to the blade that you're seeing there. And like I said, at that 2,500, that any bit of movement, it's really hard to do video at 2,500. It's probably best to uh, do like still pictures, but that's what you're seeing there. But do you see how much nice and straighter, we have that nice horizontal line. We don't have all that mountain peaking so much there. And it is just blows my mind that it's able to pick up those little, microscopic pieces of paper on that blade. Okay, so here's some still images, and this is at 1500. I want you to take note to that very top little reflection going all the way across that apex. That is the burr before being stropped. And now the next picture you're going to see is after I stropped it. And now do you see how clean that is and that how that little reflection is gone? And this is just to kind of show you how this can really help your sharpening because that's something you're not going to see with the naked eye. And here's one last one. You can see we have sections that are clean, but then there's a little bit of section where there's still a tiny little bit of burr. And sometimes you'll feel that parts of the knife cutting really well and other parts not quite cutting as well. And it's sometimes because there's a little burr left behind that still needs to come off. In the description of this video, I'll leave the coupon code and any links you need if you're interested in the 10-inch GokaFix microscope.